There he is, how are you Luke? Good mate, how are you? <laughs> Ready to go? <laughs> Ready to go mate, right. Round two. Cool. Let's go. So I'm here with Luke and the first question I have is, I'm just doing base Ks at the moment. So I've been training for about a month, pretty hard, but I'm certainly not at my peak fitness or anywhere near it. And yesterday I went and rode after seat, which is for me is a big ride, biggest ride in six months, 135K. So I'm feeling pretty fatigued today, I'm a bit concerned, like is that going to affect my test? Should I be worried about that, the lactate test we're going to do today? Well, I mean, normally I'd, I'd recommend that we don't do a, a big hard ride 24 hours prior. Oh, okay. um, but having said that, you said it was zone two, base yes. sort of intensity. Um, the test today is only going to be about 20 minutes in total duration, of which we'll spend about six or seven minutes beyond threshold. So it's not, it's not even as hard as like a 20-minute time trial test, for example. Um, we'll find out when we jump on, you're resting lactate. If it's under two millimoles, Tick in the box, we're fine. That, right. that, that's uh, considered a, a resting lactate value. So it was yesterday you did the, the ride? The long ride, yeah. What time did you finish up? Uh, about 10.30. So 24 hours? Yep. So we should be fine. No, not really. Like, I mean, sure, it's, it's going to affect, uh, it's going to affect your, your VO2 max and, and where your actual lactate threshold is. But in the grand scheme of things, from, from the perspective of actually identifying your training zones and giving you specific advice, it doesn't matter if you're peak fitness or, or just starting out. Um, and we'll see that shortly. But... Uh, it really doesn't matter because it's it's a true representation of where you, you are currently at. Will those zones change? Absolutely, they will. Um, but then we do the test again three months down the track, reassess the zones, and then um, re-prescribe training based on your, your current fitness level at the time. I was coming in anticipating a lactate test, but you said we're going to do a blend of lactate and VO2. So could you just quickly explain like what's the difference between them both and why am I actually gonna do them both combined? So if you go to any other lab, you can either do a VO2 max test or, or a lactate threshold test. A VO2 max test is what we did last time, 20 watt ramp every one minute. So we wanna get you to exhaustion within 12 minutes. The reason we choose 12 minutes or, or nine to 12 minutes is because we don't want heat load stress to play a factor. We don't want that build up of lactic acid to be in the muscles for too long. So we wanna get you up to your max heart rate basically as quickly as we possibly can, uh, but also allowing that you, can, you can't get to max heart rate in six minutes. It takes a little, little bit of time. So that's gonna be the best test just to get your VO2 2 max value but the point is your vo2 max value doesn't mean much by itself it's how can we use that for training a lactate test we wouldn't worry about the mass we just take a finger prick so we get a small blood sample every three minutes so that's a 30 watt ramp every three minutes so it's a longer test it takes instead of 12 minutes it's closer to 20 to 25 minutes we want to let that lactate accumulate in the blood okay um, that test alone is going to give you your lactate threshold but what what what, what i like to do is to combine the two together because that's gonna give us um, all aspects of your physiology. If we just do the VO2 max test, I can see how well your, your muscles are using oxygen. If I just do the lactate threshold test, I can see how well you can tolerate that fatigue when it comes in the legs. But we, why don't we measure them both? Because it's all relevant to the training methods, okay? So we can build aerobic capacity, so your base case, aerobic power, which is how quickly you can use oxygen, or we can improve how well you can tolerate lactic acid once it's present. Normally, in 95% of people, Two of those aspects will be pretty good and one, one won't be. But if we're not measuring all three of them, it's hard to figure out exactly what you should be doing. Yeah, and that's okay. why we do both Yeah, right. at the same time. Because my understanding is some labs just give you a number and that's a bit of a myth. People just think, oh, you do these tests to get a number. But you actually, once you get the number, you actually prescribe the, a methodology to improve your performance. Yeah, well, I mean, you're gonna get, it's going to be better for training prescription. But also, even if we did a, let's say we just did a lactate threshold test. So what we look for is a two millimole jump. So let's say, for example, um, start a test, lactate's one, then... 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3 to 4, and then we go from 4 to 7, okay? Yeah. Big jump. We know that, all right, we've gone up more than 2, so that's going to be our threshold. What happens if it happens halfway through a stage? You know, it, it could happen at any, it doesn't, because we only take lactate every three minutes. We're not getting that continual feedback, but by having the mask on uh, and measuring your, your respiratory rate every 30 seconds, we can pinpoint the exact point. It might be halfway through an interval that we actually hit that, that lactate threshold number. So a lot of the labs, yeah, so that they, they will give you the numbers, but then it's up to you, you or your coach or whoever it is to actually um, determine how to turn that into a, a training zone. Um, and we've just come up with a method that, that works really well that's really easy to understand for everybody. So we get our base training zone two stuff, we get our tempo, we get our threshold, and we get our, our, our um, so above threshold anaerobic style work so yeah. that we can then give you specific advice based on that. Right. Should we get stuck in? Let's do it. All right, cool. Have a good day. Alright guys, so all we can actually see is I'm going to take you over to 
uh, Cam's lactate data, and we're gonna see that it's actually quite uh, high at the beginning, 5.3 at rest, and then it actually went down to two, and then down to 1.9 again. So he's actually gone from rest to exercise, and his um, and his lactates come down. So lactate or lactic acid is a byproduct of, of the anaerobic glycolysis system. So if we don't have oxygen available, we're going to get uh, fatiguing lactic acid in the legs. Now, Cam was saying that he did a big ride yesterday. Did you do uh, an active recovery at the end? Did you do that? Yeah, you just finished the ride and that was it. Okay. So he actually had residual lactic acid in the legs. Now. Fun little tip, if you do just 10 minutes of active recovery, so that's actually below, uh, we use 56% VO2 max, it would be the equivalent of say, cam riding at you know, heart rate of 100, 110, very, very easy intensity. That's actually going to the oxygen that comes into, the, into your body, that's gonna metabolize lactic acid and turn, um, and actually turn it into water. So water being non-fatiguing. So just 10 minutes after a ride, um, we'll be able to bring that lactic acid down. We saw it went from five, three to two in just three minutes of, of riding at 180 watts. Quick update where we're at. I'm about to take another sample soon at nine minute mark. Heart rate 150, 47.2 VO2 max. The values we have here, VE is how much air he's breathing in. So 96 liters. He got to 230 when we did the VO2 max test. 38 breaths, pretty comfortable. Heart rate there at 149. So pretty comfy at the moment. When he gets to two and a half millimoles of lactate, currently at 1.9, um, then we know he's at his zone two. And normally when he gets to about four, that would be considered his threshold, but we'll, we'll keep you up to date with that. Big update, 161 heart rate, 87% of his estimated maximum. 56.6 VO2, 122 liters. Last lactate reading, 2.3. As I said, when we get to 2.5, that means top end of his zone two. So we're pretty much bang on it. From here, we're gonna get to three, fours, and then well and truly above that afterwards. So uh, keep it up, Cam. Somewhere around 162 is gonna be that heart rate. Cam working really, really hard here. You can see here, his lactate has now jumped up to 5.6. So, keep going if you can, keep going if you can, all right? Finger out. You're all right. I'm going up, it's on you, mate, it's on you. Come on, in the latter stages now, nearly there, working hard, come on. Good, Cam, that's the way, keep it going, keep it up. 15 seconds in the stage, finish this stage with 360 watts. Next 15, one more 15, come on, get to the minute, get to the minute. Mate, doing a really good job, keep it up, done there. So we've just finished the test. I'm pretty fatigued, I can't even talk properly. And Luke's downloaded all the data, so we're gonna go through just over here. All right, so what have we got here? I'm gonna do a little bit of light stretching whilst Yeah, yeah, go for it, mate, <laughs> yeah. Cooking. Yeah, so we got some, yeah, obviously got, um, got your numbers here. So uh, test protocol, we did a, a 30 watt ramp every three minutes, so starting at 180, we go to 210, 240, 270. I'll go down to our peak values, we hit, um, we got 30 seconds into 390, we actually we hit our VO2 max at uh, the end of 360 there, which is completely normal. 199 litres of air coming in, it's a, so, so it's a big amount. So why do you only hit your VO2 max before the test even finishes? Because it becomes a point where, all the, I mean in this instance, we pulled out about, 20 seconds into that stage, as opposed to the 30. So we averaged it out over 30 seconds, meaning that we wouldn't have got the, the whole amount of that 30 second duration of how much air you're breathing in. But what, what will often happen is somebody might even hit their VO2 max, you know, two minutes prior to the end of the test. The reason that is, they're breathing in more air, but their muscles physically can't exchange the oxygen across right. um, quickly enough. So um, we might hit a plateau, so, which means if we can't actually use up any more oxygen, the only way that we can further increase our power output is through the anaerobic pathway, which is the lactic acid um, filling up the, the muscles in the legs, which is fine, but we're gonna fatigue pretty quickly. So we hit yeah, 200 litres, 199 litres of air coming in, which is big 70 breaths, so more than one a second, it's quite a lot. Max heart rate today, 181, uh, and your relative VO2 max of 65.9, okay, which is, which is very good. It's, I mean, not obviously not as impressive as what we hit last time, which is off the charts, but that still well and truly puts you in that uh, that excellent category. I look for sort of 60, 60 as I say, yep, you 
got a lot to work with, pretty yeah. competitive. 70 and above is like, you know, let's think about winning some races, like yeah. really winning some races, okay? So, um, so, so why was Anderson last time? Just fit us. I mean, a couple of factors. One, yeah, six months in between tests uh, could, could play a factor, uh, but also the test protocol as well. Being a slower ramp, and I'll probably be, better to throw it to you, mate, and ask you, but uh, it's, it, it's a harder test, isn't it? Like three minutes, trying to hold a workload for three minutes. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more factors that come into play. One, the, the major one being lactic acid accumulation in the legs. Yeah. Um, it, it's in the legs for sort of seven minutes at a high level as opposed to maybe three because we're ramping it up very quickly in the VO2 test. And also a longer duration of the test as well because um, we're doing a, uh, so doing a three minute ramp, so you're gonna start to, the heat load stress and not dehydration so much, but definitely heat load stress. You're still dripping as we can see now, yeah. pretty warm. Uh, a lot more factors come into play, so you, can't, you won't necessarily hit your peak value. So last time we actually got to 230 litres of air. Yeah. So you actually couldn't breathe in as much air overall. Uh, and the main reason being, which we can go into in a sec, is that you, and you guessed it before you came in, is, is that you couldn't really tolerate lactic acid when it came in. Yeah. Okay. You were really good at delaying when it came in because the aerobic base is good, but when it came in, it, it, it overcame you pretty quickly um, and, and there was only so much you could do. I mean, the key take homes, and this is why we like to do the, the hybrid test where we do both at the same time, because I like to look at this lactate graph here, uh, which we can jump onto there. So lactate graph here, as well as our fraction of expired oxygen. I'll quickly roll through this first, okay? So this is the lactate graph. We see it came out, came down quite a lot from that 5.3 to that 2, which is due to that active recovery we said, started to get the, the legs ticking over and metabolizing all those that, all that lactic acid stuff, okay? So um, as I mentioned before, we look for 2.5 millimoles to be that top end endurance zone. So you actually hit that at 300 watts, that's huge, at a heart rate of 165, okay? So it was really quite comfortable. What typically would happen with, let's say somebody who was peak fitness, all well-rounded, they've done their base, they've also done their build sort of phase, okay? What will happen is they'll go from, say, 2.5 millimoles of lactate, then they might go to three and a half, then they might go to four, and then they'll go from four to like six, so to speak. Whereas you can see with your data, you went straight from 2.5 to 5.6, okay? So it was a quite a quick jump from being in your um, zone two to then actually being at your top end of your threshold. Yeah. Your threshold zone is 20 watts, from 300 to 320 watts. It didn't take you long to go from being uh, a zone two easy aerobic ride to yeah. then being threshold, okay? Yeah. You've got a really big aerobic zone. It's actually 180 to 300 watts, a massive aerobic zone, right. but then a very small threshold zone, uh, which is purely because of the training you've been doing, yeah. okay? okay. Um, so that alone, if so we can I see- I could be riding 280 watts and I'd be aerobic. So, like, like, like for a four hour ride? Yeah, so long as heart rate stayed under 165 as well. Oh, That's where you gotta be a little bit careful with the okay. two, because you got a steady state. Like heart rate, the hot, if it's a hotter day, your body's under more stress um, to, to produce energy, because you gotta send blood to the skin to start sweating and all that sort of stuff. So um, based on today's conditions, 300 watts, but what I like to do with the longer rides is go by heart rate, because it will account for all those external variables, um, oh. dehydration, heat load, uh, fatigue from a previous ride, that sort of stuff. Right? Your heart rate doesn't lie, so to speak. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty good represent, representation of, of where your body's at. Um, but yeah, 300 being the top end, yeah. So that'd be quite, quite a lot of, it's a quite a lot of watts, mate. But there's, there's such a fine line for you particularly between two and a half to 5.6 millimoles of lactate it was the space of one stage. It's quite a big jump. So um, what that really tells me, I mean, even without going further, we will in a sec, but without going further, uh, you need to do threshold work. So what that would be, what that mean is, is spending time at, at or slightly above your threshold. So your threshold power is 320. So we want to do efforts, generally a two to one, three to one, four to one, um, at or above threshold. So a, an example would be 20 minutes at 330 watts, it's going to hurt you, 10 minute recovery, right? That'd be a two to one, or a th three to one would be um, you know, nine minutes on, three minutes off. Okay, okay? so so more, more work than rest, or f four to one would be a, a 12 on, three off, for example, mm -hmm. okay? So we want to, what we want to do is accumulate lactic acid, have a partial recovery, and then get it back in there again, okay? Yeah. By doing that, you're gonna force your body to actually become better at tolerating and clearing that lactic acid. So we, instead of going from 2.5 to 5.6, we go from 2.5 to 3.5, then to four, and then we jump up beyond that. The two recommendations, one would be the, the longer style ones I just said, like 20 on 10 off, yeah. but also back to the, um, the original training recommendation, and we can sort of see it in this graph here, uh, it's, a, it's a gradual incline, and then when we hit this point here, which is actually your threshold, it's quite a sudden sharp increase, okay? Yeah, okay. What's that dip? Uh, we would have been talking. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, right. no, no stress. So what actually happened here is, uh, and this is only two minutes after we hit your end of zone two, so it's, it's literally a two minute bracket. This is all about aerobic power. So this is, um, it's a slightly different training focus, but this is the, 
that would be the 400 watt one I was telling you about last time, okay? So it's a one to one work to rest, two on, two off, three on, three off, four on, four off. Uh, and we wanna have that rest because for this adaptation, we actually wanna try to get rid of lactic acid in the system as much as possible, okay? Because lactic, two ways we can improve fitness. We can improve the aerobic ability to use oxygen, or we can improve our tolerance of that lactic acid, which we saw before, okay? Um, look, there's some crossover effect, of course, but they do have actually in theory, they're polar opposite adaptations, okay? One's aerobic, one's anaerobic, yeah? So for this one, to improve our aerobic engine, we don't want lactic acid in the system because it actually starts to shut off the mitochondria in the muscles. That they're what, they're what use up the oxygen, okay? So having a one to one work to rest ratio, because we're going at say 400 watts very, very hard above threshold, a lot of lactic acid is gonna come in in four minutes, yeah? Agree, uh, absolutely. But then by having a four minute recovery, we get rid of most of it. Okay, which means those mitochondria can function and fire again before you do another effort, so on and so forth. Okay, so one's about trying to keep the quality of the both about high quality sessions. But one's trying to keep the quality of the session high, uh, but always have lactic acid in the in the system, so we have a shorter recovery for the goal of um, delaying that big spike in our blood lactate. And the other one is actually uh, an aerobic focus, which is trying to give us more mitochondria, so there's more chances of that oxygen to actually diffuse across. Um, the, the muscle and blood uh, to create aerobic energy. Um, and they're the, two, they're the two factors where I can see you doing the most, or getting the most benefit, which, which is sort of in line with what you've currently been doing. Um, your aerobic base is great, like this is awesome. You know, it, it, in the ones into the low twos for quite a long time. So aerobic base, tick, tick. Well, again, it comes down to when do you need to be fit by? Um, in a month. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I normally recommend starting to put in um, some of that anaerobic stuff, threshold style stuff, uh, eight weeks prior. Eight weeks to, prior. To an wow, event, okay, yeah, right. generally, with a real big focus on, on specific threshold four weeks prior. So that means trying to get out on the same terrain that you're going to race at. Um, if you know there's going to be um, 30 second um, steep hills, get out and do 30 second steep hills, you know, trying to replicate the race as closely as possible. If you've got four weeks, then um, I would absolutely. How, how long? Three month season, though. It's yep. three months, so it's kind of like rolling into the season as yeah. opposed to being. Yeah, that well, that's right. I mean, I mean, in terms of our recommendations, we try to, if, if you can do 110% of expected race time for your zone two ride and, and it's quite comfortable, then you've got a good enough aerobic base. Right. That's okay. the general rule. Now, if you've got to do a 500K event, you got to be smart, like you know, you're not going to go out and do a 500k training ride. But under normal circumstances, if you're going to go do, I know, for example, I'm not sure when this is going to come out, but Amy's Grand Fondo's next week or the week after, 120k's. If somebody's expecting to do that in three and a half hours, your, your longest ride would be somewhere about four hours. It's not going to hurt you, but it's not necessarily going to benefit you any more than doing so an hour and a half to two hours, right? Potentially, and be better off doing anaerobic work. It's going to be more specific, yeah, yeah. potentially. So yeah. how much how much time do you have to train and you got to monitor fatigue and recovery? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean I do crits as well, and I, I don't ride more than no, I might do a three hour tops, but you know that's just because you're riding with your mate, so to speak. But from a performance standpoint, um, you know I'd be keeping sort of two hours being the tops, but even an hour and a half potentially. Yeah, and you you could keep doing it, keep increasing the volume. You might get two, three, five percent benefit tops, but if you go do short stuff, anaerobic style stuff, the, the, the four on four off or the 20 on 10 off, uh, added around your functional threshold power, um, I could see a quick and significant 10 or 15% within four to six weeks, just yeah. by just by training um, a different sort of energy system, which will be specific to the race. Yeah. So in terms of your zones, and obviously I'll send these through to you, but uh, your aerobic zone is quite a bit, it's a very big one because you've done a lot of base. So right, 126 to 165 heart rate, 180 to 300 watts, right, big, big range. Threshold's very small, 166 to 172 heart rate, 301 to 320 watts, all right? We want to get that from close to 300 to say 350 watts by doing more of this threshold stuff where you're right at that limit or slightly above, okay? Yeah. Uh, and then your top end zone, VO2 max or, or above threshold is 173 to your max heart rate today of 181, uh, 321 to 360 watts, okay? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the biggest, well, probably two, two main ones. I, the, the big thing that, uh, you do a field test, you know, do a 20 minute time trial test, step test, whatever it is, and you get your zones from that. You can normally get a pretty good FTP, generally, you know, within a couple of watts, right? What I really struggle, and what I, I'm still trying to figure out myself, but I, if there's a possible way to do it, but what you can't find is that aerobic heart rate zone. It's not possible. How, unless you measure, physically measure blood lactate, how are you gonna do it? It's not a percentage of anything, okay? Uh, some people, will, their aerobic heart rate will be, um, you know, 70% of their FTP, others it'll be 80%. Yours is very high, because your FTP is only 20 watts above it, so yours is like 95%, right? Mm. That is gonna be very varied between an individual. 
okay? Um, whereas your FTP, you can do a field test on that because you just go as hard as you possibly can and you know that that's gonna be your FTP anyway. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's a pretty easy one to pick. Yeah. Um, so one, you, you can't really get your, your aerobic zone two heart rate, and equations work, it's a bell curve, it works for 68% of people, other 32% yeah, yeah, that's rubbish, yeah? yeah, yeah. <laughs> rubbish equation. Um, we had a guy here, a 38 year old, hit a max heart rate of 213 the other day. Wow. Okay, his threshold's 204 heart rate. <laughs> Above his max, but it's wow. not, is fine, do you know what I mean? So he yeah. benefits from actually getting his heart rate up that high. The other reason why, why a lab test, or especially the hybrid test that we did would be better than um, a field-based alternative is that, again, it comes down to the strengths and weaknesses. You go do a 20 minute time trial, what does it tell you? It tells you FTP, right? Yeah. How are we going to improve that FTP? Do we need to do aerobic stuff? Do we need, do we need to do volume? Is it need to be VO2 intervals above at 95% VO2 max? Does it need to be more threshold style work? We don't know because we don't get the lactate graph. We don't get that fraction of expired oxygen graph, yeah. okay? So it, you, you know what your FTP is, but then you don't know, specifically for you, yeah. which one of three ways you should focus on actually improving it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, we've had a, had a guy come in in 2016. He came in with a VO2 max of 68, which is still very, very good. He was a runner. All, all we did was long slow, just massive on his long slow base case. Yeah. Um, we, he was doing 10 hours a week. when he, we, we did the test, didn't even coach him, just gave him recommendations. Uh, and what he did was uh, two high intensity sessions a week at that 95% at that, uh, VO2 max. So for you, that was like that 400, 400 watts on um, for, for three minutes, three minutes yeah. and then three minutes off. Uh, within four months, his VO2 was up to 80. Wow. Um, and oh, that, yeah. that correlated, he was a runner. He was doing a 39 minute 10K, then he went to do a 35 minute 10K yeah. after that. We had an athlete who um, is, uh, just did a very, very good race at, it's a, a triathlete, up in Cairns, he won the age group in a 355 for a half Ironman. Um, when he was working with us, he was doing 23 hours a week training, which is quite a lot. Wow. Uh, <laughs> with 80% of that being base Ks, he came to me, and sure enough, his aerobic capacity, his base was fantastic. Yeah. So why do we want to go and train base? Well, we don't need to. Yeah, so what we did yeah. was actually cut him down to eight hours a week. His FTP went from 270 to 300 watts in three months by doing a third of the training. Wow. I'm not against volume, don't get me wrong, um, but a lot of athletes are already good at volume. Yeah. Right? That's what they do. Your body's going to adapt to what it does. So if you already do have a big a couple of years, a couple of seasons of, of long base case under the belt, you're probably already going to be very strong in that aspect. So why would we go and chase two or three or 4% gains when we can change your training, get more high quality intervals, if that's what you need, which in your case you do, yeah. do actually a third of the training, but you can get more performance result. Yeah. Likewise, we get athletes who do have a poor base and we have to do the volume. But yeah. it just comes down to rather than than working on the the misconceptions of the industry, like this is what we do, 80% aerobic, 20% anaerobic, we use 220 minus your age and a percentage of that. Get more individualized, get specific to what you need to do. Um, and, and that's it, we don't have any fancy training. It's not like we do anything spectacular. It's just personalized training based on what you need to do. Mm. Uh, if you came to me without this testing and asked me to get you fit, I could do it as well as anybody else out there, but I'd be guessing and I don't like to do that. Yeah. Whereas this is quite simple. It tells us exactly what to do. My job's easy. Mm. I look at this and I just say, oh, I know that this training session does this, this is so and so forth. Yeah. And then we just have to figure out what's the most specific training for your event and how long we've got and you just do it. It's not actually that hard. <laughs> so I've just wrapped up with Luke some very good insights for my training over the next month in preparation for the criterium season. <laughs> just drop my keys. I'll catch you in the next video.